Hey everyone, welcome back to Python Code Nemesis. In today's video, we'll be looking at demystifying front-end and back-end development from a beginner's perspective. So, recently one of my um, cousins reached out to me. He was just getting into his degree in a college for computer science and he wanted to know how to get started and that is something that's a question that all of us a lot of us most of us in this field have faced at some point when we are just getting started on the degree and there is quite some time to learn but you don't know what to do and how to start so this will be something to help you with so there is a bunch of um, options when it comes to different technologies that you can start computer science or de like development with, like software development with. So that includes building complex systems, websites, web applications, um, desktop applications, which just run on your desktop. And there's also mobile applications. There are virtual reality applications, augmented reality applications. And there's also research projects. There's like a bunch of things that you can do. Now, the moment you go into college, mostly what happens is that you get subjected to a lot of competitions, hackathons, social events where you have to build something. And as a beginner, you don't know what technologies you want to use, how you have to do it, what is the easiest way to do it, what is the most time efficient way of doing it. So for that, after having worked in this um, space industry for quite some time, I will be sharing my insights on how I could have done something different and hopefully this will help you guys as well. So the first thing is that when you when you know how to build a web application because ultimately it's amazing if you want to have your own startup that's really good if you want to start your own business that that's really cool but ultimately we all are looking for jobs from this experience. We want like a good um, stable job to maybe pay off loans and stuff or yeah, at the end of the day to get settled in life, to be financially independent. And for that, you need to know web development because that is the most common thing that companies that come, they ask for like some web development experience. What is web development? It's, um, so let's look at this website, right? Medium.com. How is it built? How are these buttons working? What's the functionality? When you click on this button on this front end, what happens in the back end of the application? And when I talk about back end, I don't know how Medium was designed, but usually there is like a front end framework. And the front end is hosted on a separate domain. And then you have the back end URL, which is hosted on some other site. So what happens? What are the URLs that are called? What are the callbacks? What are hooks? All of this comes in the world of web development. In this video, we will be speaking about web development and only that, and we'll gain some insights on what it is and how you can do it in the most simplest project. So what is front-end development? It's just creating the user interface and experience that, like let's say for this medium.com page, this is my user experience. There's a search button, there's like a profile button, there's um, this button that I can click, this is, there's a notifications button, there's a write button. So these are um, 
elements, components, buttons, as you can call it. And this is what is designed during front-end development. A lot of websites use React. It's a popular JavaScript library for building UIs, which is user interfaces. You can create usable UI components that can be combined to form complex web applications. So that's what React does. And React is something I would suggest using for your front end applications because that makes your job a lot easier. React is very easy to use for beginners as well. There's a ton of documentation and community support, something which is very, very important and we tend to overlook. So when you're stuck with something, right, go to the Slack community, go to their forum, go to their GitHub, post your issue. And this community, these communities are really proactive in answering your questions. So they will want you to post those questions so that they can answer. So always when you're facing any issues and you can't find a way out, Along with posting that question to Stack Overflow, if it's not there, post it on these um, framework forums. Now that the front end is done, you see when I click on this, there's this. Um, so when you click on this, right, something happens. So this is just the front end, right? What happens when you click on this? All of this code cannot be in the U like UI. Why? Because UI needs to be able to render all of this. So let's say there's a lot of data and you're performing all the calculations and everything in the front end of the application. The application will become very slow. Why would you? How would you correct that? The back end. So this is not exactly why we come into the deeps of this in a later video. But for now, all the co complex calculations, that is, if all of this is in the front end code, the front end code will become insanely big and very difficult to understand. So all of these functions, all of these functionalities is encapsulated within the back end code. So there's like a get add two numbers. The add two numbers thing is not done in the front end because this add two numbers is not a is a very simple function, right? But you'll obviously have way more complicated functions. So all of this being in the front end will create unnecessary hassle. So hence the back end to do all of these complex calculations. So this involves building the server side logic. So the person who is working with this front end is the client and the back end server is the one that is interacting with the client, which is me, to get my information, process it and return it back to show me something useful. So it handles tasks such as storing and retrieving data, user authentication and handling business logic. Back end developers work with databases, servers and programming languages to ensure that the front end has the necessary data and functionality. So these are the two main important things. So all of this might sound very um, new to you if you're a beginner, but trust me, it's really easy and we'll get it done. Now that we're talking of back end, let's talk about my favorite framework and language to develop backend applications, that's Flask and Python. Python is an amazing language which is used widely in web development. Flask is a micro web framework providing essentials for building web applications without unnecessary overhead. So it basically gives you functions which makes your life easier. So you don't have to like code way too much. You can like call in predefined functions just like um, in Java, there's um, libraries to call stack and queues instead of having to write the stack and queue from scratch. Here you have Flask to help you write the web application from scratch. Just the backend though. 
So now let's get, our, get hands on experience by creating a simple web application that integrates front and back end components. So, first, um, you'll be installing the Python from python.org. If you're on Windows, try to download the executable, which will set it up and set up your parts. Install Flask. So, run pip install Flask. So, once you set up Python, right? Open a new terminal. An existing terminal, which was already open, might not have Python set yet. So you need to refresh your terminal or like open a term, new terminal, basically. Run pip install Flask. That will install the Flask framework. Create a very simple app.py file. So from Flask, you import Flask. Create a new app. And this is your first route. You can also like probably add in like any slash anything. So slash maybe beginner or slash anything. I've just used the just the simple slash. So get hello. Return hello from Flask backend. So if you run this app, the default port for this application is 5000 per Flask. Now what is a port, right? You know that there's, um, so when you have something locally, you can open local host 5000 and different um, URLs. Port is that a uh, 5000 number. So which port on it is it running? You can change it as you please. So this is basically the URL that your Flask app will be running at. And so, the localhost 5000, when you just open localhost 5000, this is the message that you'll be seeing. You can always add more routes. So when you have localhost 5000 slash beginner, and you have a different message here, that is what it will show. Open a terminal and command prompt, navigate to the directory where app.py is located. Very important, you need to be in the folder where app.py is located, otherwise you won't be able to run this. Run the command python app.py. You'll see an output indicating that the Flask app is running. Installation. Now for the front end with React, install Node.js. If you don't have Node.js installed, download and install it from the official website, Node.js. Now, once you've done that, create a new terminal and run this command, npx create react app front end. So you can change this front end as you please. Just add any name of the app that you want to give to your front end application. And it will create a new React app. The best part about React is it creates a whole structure for you. So you don't really have to do too much work here. And then cd front end to move into the newly created directory. Creating a simple React component. Open the source app.js file in your preferred code editor and replace its contents with this. So this is a very, very simple React application. So this is where we have our data, right? This is where we hosted our backend. And it will return this message, this string, hello from Flask backend. So this fetches that hello from Flask backend and sets the message to data, this data that we just got. And this creates a new division with a header. It just has a new paragraph with this message, this message variable that we declared. So React has states, right, this message, and there's a set message function, which will set this message as you know this function is executed, this use effect function. And then you can export this default app. Now in the terminal or command prompt, you still have to be within the front end directory, run npm start. So your default web browser will open and see the React application running. It will display the message from the Flask backend. So once you've done this, this is like your base, your boilerplate code for anything that you want to do. We'll look at insane amount of examples. I have all of them on my medium where you can just make very small changes to this existing structure, 
post both the back end and front end on the net and you'll have an amazing project for your hackathon for your resume something which people in first year might lack so that's it happy coding and see you in the next video bye